Um, John Bashford, I'm the Director of Research at Breaking Barriers Innovations. I'll, I'll just um, briefly tell people a bit more about us if you don't know. Uh, we've been going for six years now. We came yeah. together in 2015, really looking at the integration of health and social care. Um, but particularly thinking about that from a perspective of place uh, and the paradox of place, which is something we talk a lot about at the moment, is it doesn't have a budget. Budgets are still for organisations. There isn't a, a budget for place, but we need to be able to integrate much more across uh, health care, local authority services, voluntary sector, um, on, a, on, a, on a much more fundamental level. And in 2018, we actually did a, a housing and health focus project, a Homes Report, which you can get from our website, which uh, goes into this in detail. I'm not going to talk through this bit uh, in any depth, um, but you're happy to follow up with any of us if you're interested. But we, did, we, we, we created a playbook for place. It has some, it's quite simple uh, in essence but uh, is a, a, proved to be a very helpful way to get local areas to think about, first of all, the strategic alignment. So really picking on the one defining issue that's really going to make a difference for everybody and that the, the people around the system leaders in the area can really agree this is the thing we need to focus on. It's not about creating new strategy, but really much more concentratedly in a focused way thinking about a particular issue. For a lot of these, this has been an aspect of the social determinants of health. But it's not enough on its own to do that. We have to also then make sure that there are robust means of actually involving local people, not consulting them, but actually bringing people into a co-design, co-production uh, process in terms of identifying solutions, and at the same time, equipping the workforce who we expect to deliver um, service elements of this to really enable that the entire workforce is, is properly equipped with the competencies and skills to do that and thinking about what that means for the workforce of the future. Those things then enable real service integration and service transformation at a place-based level and it's a place-based approach that delivers. We've, we've been working over the last couple of years in eight areas and as mentioned they're, they're, they're all place-based programs but very strongly focused on the social determinants of health. One of our first was Portsmouth and the, the, the dominant issue that the um, local system leaders in Portsmouth wanted us to look at was social isolation and this was pre-pandemic. I think a year on we, we all have learned a lot about social isolation. But at the time we started the Portsmouth programme, and there is a national strategy for social isolation, a lot of the thinking really was that this was about the elderly. We wanted to take a, a much broader picture and say, actually, there are all kinds of people affected by social isolation. It goes right across the life course. It's intergenerational. There's, again, a report and an action plan that you can access from our website about this. I just want to mention a couple of the core findings from it is, that we were throwing a lot of things at social isolation, good things, helpful things, befriending services, um, referring people to social prescribing, giving people um, family conferencing, looking at mental health and addictions. But actually, they're, they're sticking plasters. They're, they're helpful, they're important, but they're not getting to the fundamental problems, which is people's natural ability to be able to connect and relate to others and build their, their social networks. As, as David was describing, it's both physical and social distancing. And it was the structural approaches and the evidence in research supports this that are much, much more effective. It's very much about how we design local neighbourhoods and how a neighbourhood functions. It's all the things that don't tend to be funded, like volunteering, breakfast clubs, all the sorts of things that sometimes sit on the periphery uh, of, of big service delivery areas, but they're fundamental to how people connect and relate to each other. And the Ministry of Housing Communities and Local Government, under the national strategy, all departments are required to have their own um, programmes looking at social isolation. And they want, they heard about the Portsmouth work, were interested in that, and they asked us to do some additional work. And that was the Laying the Foundations report, which I think all of you have received. In our initial stakeholder engagement for that, we, we held a round table and it, that was really about thinking collectively with various stakeholders from planning, local authorities, the health system, how we define the problem, what that means in terms of design, particularly looking at new settlements and the delivery mechanisms for that. 
And we did this through two lenses, firstly places. And the message is really is, you know, you can't design or plan or think on a, a one size fits all. There are there are real differences at a place level that have to be considered. Some of the obvious ones thinking about rural areas, particularly in terms of transport, poor digital connectivity. We've increasing numbers of coastal areas that are rising in terms of deprivation and isolation is becoming a bigger factor alongside that decline in investment and, and deprivation going alongside it. We've also got more culturally dead places where there isn't a distinctive place making features anymore. Loss of arts funding has contributed to that, but it's also the withdrawal of, of services sometimes from outer areas, concentrations very much into city centres and neglect of some of the outlying areas. The combination of all three uh, is really important in thinking about place. And in terms of people, as I mentioned, from the point of view of thinking about those who are isolated, uh, and we really get this now after the last year of the pandemic, it is absolutely cross-generational. And the latest statistics show it's young people in particular who are suffering much more from isolation and loneliness. That doesn't mean we ignore the issues about senior living and we have to think about that in terms of planning, housing needs, the demographic ch changes that are taking place here. We've more older people single, living alone, often homeowners, but actually living in poverty, not really able to maintain the uptake of their houses. Many unable to connect and benefit from um, their what assets and community connections might be going on in the neighbourhood. And other diverse groups of people that we have to think about from a people perspective. So we plan the environment to enable all communities to thrive, not just thinking about one standard group. So in the report, there's two key things from the plan in that. One is a conceptual framework for quality. I'm not going to go through all of these uh, 12 points here, but there's one big message from this, which is really about the role of anchors. The role of anchor organisations, those big statutory and non-statutory bodies that aren't going anywhere, that have core civic and um, corporate citizen duties to their local communities, could do a lot more in terms of design, planning and the environment and for health and particularly thinking about social isolation. So how we actually use that on a much more integrated basis is key. And in terms of then thinking about competencies and skills, and we did a, a sort of forensic analysis of what at the time was the national policy planning framework, the 2019 uh, edition. We went through that looking at every aspect of it where socialised and loneliness actually could matter more and was significant because the words aren't used in any of those frameworks, but they're fundamental to so much of the planning um, guidance and the framework and to where we want to get to. But there's very little. We don't train people how to work on in an integrated way. We don't ex explain any of this to our health and care colleagues in a, in a way that they would fully understand. And a lot of the planning developers, architects don't understand the health systems as much. So we've got to change the approach to competency development using the planning framework, but actually overlaying that with a more considered focus on such a big issue as social isolation and loneliness. The report focuses on new settlements, which was the brief we were given, but one of the big messages is, is stewardship and particularly the ability of local communities to participate and be part of that stewardship of existing housing stock and that is by far the bigger challenge. We've got to think about that in terms of design of new settlements and thinking on a much longer time frame what stewardship would mean. But we've also got to look much more strongly at existing housing stock and the challenge of how we address the, the issues in that. Lockdown has actually provided us with a lot of learning in this area. So we've got to capture that now. We've got to be able to act on it. We know uh, that people who are living in uncrowded, damp, unsafe homes have actually be much more susceptible to the spread of COVID-19 and to death rates and that these are very often concentrated in poor areas with declining housing and, and poor neighbourhood design. Resilience has been fundamental and as, as David mentioned low levels of digital literacy and connectivity have actually fundamentally isolated groups of people in ways that have, we haven't thought about in it, as we should have done. Um, yes we've, we've learned a lot there's good things going on with digital throughout the last year, but there are still people who haven't been able to access that. We've also learned just how local place is. To people, it's 
really is local shops the part where they walk the dogs it's it's the immediate neighborhood in which people live and from a service level that's really key not many people um, appreciated um, the role of community pharmacies that we've seen uh, do all sorts during the pandemic they remained open throughout they've been providing vaccines 99 percent are actually within 20 minutes uh, in deprived areas so these are very very local services um, that we're starting now to appreciate and think about in different ways where we want to get to is to use our playbook program to really drive momentum around this, this core issue in areas and to bring some of this together looking for two to three locations where we can pilot the methodology really using our co-production model to think about how that could be developed on a nationwide basis and to share that learning with the ministry but also with the nhs and this is at a time of critical change um the nhs bill is is coming through we've got changes in the way the nhs is organized and we've got um the new planning framework and quality guide uh, coming out as well so it's a really important time to start to influence this agenda locally and nationally and to really consider a bit more what what it means in terms of truly connected um thriving communities where social connections and the ability to naturally be able to relate and develop relationships with others uh, is fundamental.